It's saying a lot that 30 years after being built, the Dash 8s survive in a world overrun by more modern Dash 9s, SD70s, and AC traction diesels. BNSF still has a few former Santa Fe Dash 840Bs that they're using in secondary service, but the biggest bastion of standard cab Dash 8s operating on a Class 1 North American Railroad are those on the Canadian National. The CN bought 77 former Chicago and Northwestern Dash 840Cs in 2010 and 2012, accounting for the entire CNW Standard Cab Dash 840 fleet, and most are still active across the system. The Canadian National 2000 through 2041 series engines are the XCNW C40-8 8501 to 8542 that Union Pacific operated as the 9023 to 9064 and later returned to the Lesser. The Lesser then leased the units to CSX as CREX 9023 through 9064 before the CN acquired them in the fall of 2012. Interesting enough, the number 2026 formerly belonged to a Canadian National Montreal Locomotive Works C630M. 2162 began life as Santa Fe Warbonnet 801 before becoming BNSF Warbonnet 801 and then CN2162. Something worth talking about in 2019 is the rapid disappearance of the Dash 8 diesels from Class 1 railroads, especially the standard cabs. The Dash 8s are widely regarded as the true turning point in GE's rise to locomotive supremacy as we talked about in video T107. Over the past few years, the Dash 8 GEs went from mainline service to surge fleets or worse, the scrapyard. Others have found new homes on short lines and regionals like the WNYP and Pan Am Railways. Yeah, I know, the WNYP's GEs are wide cabs. In 2016 and 2017, both NS and CSX took drastic and one might even say draconian steps to eradicate them entirely and sent at least 230 of the brutish looking machines into retirement. UP still has about 149 of them, although most have been in storage for years. Pan Am Railways is in the midst of a major motor power makeover by reducing its fleet size and taking advantage of fuel savings through a deal with GE Transportation's new short line and regional railroads division. In 2016, Pan Am bought 20 XCSX Dash 840Cs and started the shift from EMD to GE. Pan Am bought another 4 standard cab Dash 8s and 12 Dash 840Bs in mid-2017 and is planning to standardize its fleet and replace more than 100 EMD units including GP9, GP40, GP40-2W and SD40-2 models with GEs. Pan Am will eventually repaint their newly acquired GEs but for now they immediately put them to work with their main central reporting marks. While short-term leasing wasn't a particular intended part of the original plan, upturns in railroad carload traffic and the predictable power shortages that they can cause on some railroads added another aspect to General Electric's alternative locomotive business. Dozens of used Dash 8s, many with the GECX reporting mark, hastily stenciled on their sides and often a simple line painted through the name of the former owners were leased to the Power Short Railroads in 2018, particularly the Canadian National and the Norfolk Southern. Formed in 2016, GE Transportation's pre-owned power and parts business has been offering a fresh approach to the smaller, non-traditional locomotive markets. Pre-owned power and parts, or what I like to call POPs, offers a full range of products from modernized or reconditioned pre-owned locomotives to reconditioned or OEM certified used parts and major components. And if you're confused as to what the OEM stands for, it's Original Equipment Manufacturer. OEM certified back solutions is designed to meet the needs of the short line railroads, regional railroads, and the secondary locomotive market. And that's what the title of this video is all about. During the downturn in Class 1 railroad traffic, GE purchased around 700 retired Dash 8 locomotives in the form of the Dash 832B, the Dash 840B, the Dash 840C, and the Dash 840CW from CSX, NS, UP, and others to serve as core locomotives and as parts donors for GE's global repowering programs. GE partnered with Larry's Truck and Electric to scrap the Dash 8s that were selected as parts donors. GE keeps the core components and Larry's Truck and Electric gets the rest. Larry's Truck performs the same kind of work on its own locomotives, almost all of them EMDs acquired as part of Larry's locomotive resale, refurbishing, leasing, and parts business. Already, more than 250 of the Dash 8 Brutes have been systematically dismantled and harvested for their most valuable parts. Parts such as engines and alternators, blowers, fans, control panels, trucks, and traction motors. 
The better units have been spared cannibalization and have been made available for rebuilding, modernization, sale, lease, or any other worthwhile considerations. Each locomotive was thoroughly inspected and qualified in a procedure that includes all of the requirements of the conventional 92-day inspection, as well as the additional mechanical and systems checks and tests all backed by GE. Some of the qualification protocols that go into prepping a second-hand locomotive for mainline use is a host of readings to be manually recorded during the test, from the fuel, the oil, and the crankcase pressures to the input for traction horsepower and gross horsepower. Other qualifying procedures involve checking and replenishing fluids, inspecting components, wiring, and piping. Inspections can take four to six hours per locomotive if there are no complications or issues. Diesels that require heavier work are sent to the GE plant in Erie, the railroad's own shops, or to third-party shops depending upon the circumstances. A good example of this is NS's Dash 9 rebuilding program that we talked about in video T137. Some units are being rebuilt at the GE plants in Erie, Pennsylvania and Fort Worth, Texas, some at the NS's own Roanoke, Virginia and Juniata, Pennsylvania shops, and the blue and gray 4000 and 4001 Sonic bonnets having been rebuilt in Dansville, New York. Harvested components such as traction motor combos, blowers, fans, controls, and more are stored in protected warehouses and then distributed for sale or reconditioning. Prime movers selected for the program are returned for rebuilding at the GE plant in Grove City, Pennsylvania. Others are packaged to be offered as running takeout. Rebuilt engines can also be sold to domestic and international customers. GE offers components and parts as used or as OEM certified. The OEMs undergo a validation and qualification process similar to that given to the locomotives to ensure that they meet quality standards. This line of parts expands the GE portfolio which is significant since historically speaking GE's only ever had new and UX offerings which isn't financially doable for many smaller railroad customers. And despite the innovations and ambition, many short lines and even larger regional railroads aren't readily flush with the cash for new or even used locomotives. Add to that, most short lines are exclusively old school EMD operators. And while the Dash 8 advantages of fuel efficiency, microprocessor controls, greater tractive effort, and improved reliability sound nice, price and familiarity are big obstacles to overcome. We talked about the cost factors in video T137, and in regards to locomotive familiarity, man that's a hard word to say. On short lines such as the WNYP, that's video T139. But even with the price hurdles, second-hand Dash 8s seem to be a good fit for many potential customers, particularly Pan Am Railways with their Dash 8s and the WNYP with their AC46 AHs. Pan Am followed up a 20-unit order of XCSX Dash 8s in 2016 with 8 more 40Cs and 12 Dash 840Bs in 2017. And apparently happy with their investment, they returned for more in 2018 and has even kicked around the idea of replacing the rest of its entire EMD fleet, almost 100 of them with Dash 8s. Other takers on the program are the Providence and Worcester and the New Orleans Public Belt Railroad who have both bought former standard cab NS Dash 8s in the fall of 2017. Other roads that have shown interest are potential overseas customers with at least one customer teetering on the possibility of converting Dash 8s to AC traction. This is a C39-8E locomotive. Now, you learned in a previous video that the E in Norfolk Southern locomotive designation stands for enhanced. Now, there are two other designations for the E on NS, efficiency and eco. But in most cases, the E will mean enhanced. The C39-8 locomotive was built in the mid-1980s by General Electric. In fact, it was built from 84 to 87 and it wasn't a popular, it was not a popular locomotive. There were only 161 of them made and they went to the Norfolk Southern and to Conrail. Naturally, Norfolk Southern being the Bass Ackward Railroad it was at the time, geared some of them for Longwood forward operation. Conrails were relatively easy to spot because of their class lights by the number boards. When Conrail got split up, NS got some of theirs and CSX got some of theirs. There are a couple running around down on the Pennsylvania Northeastern, I think it is, out of Lansdale here in Pennsylvania. I know there's one or two of them running around down there. The rest of them, at least a lot of them from Norfolk Southern, went down to South, um, South America. I don't know if Brazil, Argentina, one, one of the Central American countries. It wasn't Mexico. I, I don't think so. 
The C39-8 was a very unpopular locomotive with crews. And ironically, it's shown here, this one, 8207, uh, ex-Conrail, is shown with the Norfolk Southern High Hood, which was also very unpopular with train crews, at least train crews up here in the north. I don't know how the southerners felt about them, but I know up here in the north, the crews hated them. The engines, they were known to have uh, a lot of problems. And that's saying a lot because the Dash 8 series on GE was actually a pretty successful locomotive. In fact, the Dash 8s are what put GE in the lead over EMD. The SD50 is what killed EMD. The Dash 8s is what gave it its edge over EMD. But nonetheless, the C39s, they were known for having a rough ride. They tended to overheat. They had turbocharger issues. And a, a lot of other reliability issues, which, like I said, for GE, I mean, a lot of people make jokes about GE, and sometimes I've been a little bit guilty of it, too, just because of the fact that I've always been an EMD fan. But GE, I mean, you can't deny that they make reliable locomotives, at least the railroads think so, seeing how GE's been on top for the last 30 years. The Conrail 8207, that's a straight C39-8, no enhanced on that, no E designation. It started off as Conrail 6012-6012. It was built in July of 1986. From Conrail, it went to Norfolk Southern, where you see it here in Buttonwood in 2004. From there, it became NSSX. I don't even know what's, what reporting mark that is, but it became NSSX 8207. And surprisingly, that engine is still running today, at least according to my research, because now it is Montreal, Maine, and Atlantic number 8207. Oh, you know what? It it may not be running because they went they they curtailed their operation to the CMQ. If you're not familiar with the Montreal, Maine, and Atlantic, they're the ones that had that big fire up in Canada. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments. But I I think I'm right about that. They had there was a big fire up there, uh, an, an oil train that was tied down. So something went on up there in Canada, and the Montreal, Maine, and Atlantic what went bankrupt or just stopped operations in the central Maine and Quebec took over their operations. So I don't know if the central Maine and Quebec is running that engine or not, but it last ran, at least according to my research as the Montreal, Maine and Atlantic 8207. As with any six axle locomotive, there's usually a four axle variant to it. And the B39 or I'm sorry, the C39-8 was no exception. The B39-8 also had very limited popularity with railroads. Uh, the Southern Pacific had them. The Santa Fe had them. And they also, a leasing company had them, LMX. Such as the one here, the LMX 8547, which we can see here in Mobile, Alabama. According to my research, this particular locomotive has always been a leaser. It's had the RLCX reporting mark, it's had the NREX, which is National Railway Equipment reporting mark, and it's had the LMX reporting mark. Same number with all three companies, but different reporting mark. Despite their diminishing ranks on the rosters of the Class 1 railroads of North America, there's still a lot of life left in the GE-8 models. That said, it seems only fitting that the steel workhorses that made GE number 1 in the 1980s would embark on new careers nearly 40 years later.